Hey guys, let's look at the new Vivo Y22. What Vivo gets absolutely right with their budget to mid-range phones is this. A bloatware-free experience. Their skin on top of Android is called Funtouch OS and over the years it's gotten very clean, very simple and very recommendable. I also rate it as one of the more customizable skins we have right now. A few days ago, I unboxed the new Vivo Y22 and in this video, I'll be sharing with you my thoughts on the device to help you understand whether or not you should buy one. Here's a phone that 1. looks good, 2. is quite powerful and 3. costs just below 20,000 shillings. For its asking price, you're getting 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage. The software supports RAM expansion, so you can increase RAM to 5 gigabytes. For storage, you can add a microSD card to expand the size of your internal storage. Vivo says performance is the main selling point for this device. I've had no issues with the device myself in all my use. The Helio G85 processor, which you've seen on many other devices, which you've reviewed here, is plenty capable. It might be quite dated right now, but you still get a pretty smooth experience with the phone handling each task I've tried on it. That is mostly social media and photo taking pretty well. RAM expansion is on by default, and I don't think there's a way to switch it off or increase the located storage to more than 1 gigabyte. I would wish to see even up to 2GB given up to virtual RAM as having 6GB of RAM in total would make me more comfortable with the phone's handling of things like games or more demanding apps. The other thing that stands out at this price point is the 50MP main camera at the back. The way the lens is made out to be a huge part of the phone's design is really good and I like the look. The extra lens is a 2MP macro shooter however, so you'll probably never use it. It should have been really nice to see an ultrawide or a telephoto lens and especially at this price point that those will be nice additions. Here are a few samples of photos I've taken with a 50 megapixel camera. I think the thing that wowed me the most was how the phone had high dynamic range. For example, some shots were direct at the sun and my own eyes could not see the grass of the fences but the phone handled it so well. I've also loved how the camera hands blurring of background subjects rather background objects and the level of detail in certain shots. For its price point, I think you're getting a camera that's at par with devices that are more expensive than neat. And that's a good thing for anyone spending cash on a new device right now. There's a 5000 mAh battery which fast charges thankfully at 18 watts over the Type-C that's included. You can draw out more than a day of use with normal usage of the device and that for me is social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, the camera app and some WhatsApp and some browsing here and there, sometimes some YouTube. I'm also quite impressed with the standby time too as the phone is very aggressive with background apps and background tasks in a bit to conserve as much battery as possible. Your notifications still arrive quite well so that's not a problem. Here's something you don't see with many other devices in this price point and even way higher price points. Official IP rating. The Vivo Y22 has an IP5X certification for dust resistance. It also has an IPX4 rating for being resistant to water splashes from any direction. It is incredible that Vivo went all the way to obtain certification for these two components, something even mid-range devices don't bother with something even certain flagships don't come with as official rating. The back of the phone has this set of patterns that play and shift with light, giving the phone a very different but quite nice look. It's a plastic finish with a plastic frame and only the front is glass. That's the 6.55 inch display. At the top of the device, oddly, you get the SIM tray. On one side of the phone, you get the volume and the power buttons. The power button doubles up as the fingerprint scanner and it's quite accurate and fast. At the bottom, you get the headphone jack, the microphone, the Type-C port and the phone's speaker. The phone's display maxes out at 720p resolution, which is a bummer as it would be nice to have full HD. However, it gets adequately bright at 530 nits. Comparing this phone to most of the other offerings at this price point, 
you will notice one thing. Vivo's approach is this. Clean software, zero blotter, and a good main camera. Some of the competition this phone has from other companies includes a lot of third-party apps, annoying bloatware, and pop-ups that mess up your experience with the device. And that's the reason for me to recommend the Y22. I just wish there was at least 128GB of storage as the baseline. Vivo should also be quite clear on software updates as a guarantee of the same will make this is a very good device to go for since most of the competition never bothers to update their devices. What are your thoughts on this phone? Would you get one? Tell me in the comment sections below.